Well, hey, everybody, it is night two of MOVE, and we are pumped, right? We're doing awesome. Well, hey, I just need to start by telling you, I grew up going to MOVE. I actually grew up going to MOVE in the great state of Oregon, which how many of you have ever been to Oregon? Anybody? All right, sweet. It's beautiful in Oregon. It's green like it is here. I'm from Vegas where everything's brown, okay? But here's what I want to say before I go any further. I would not be here tonight with you if it weren't for what Jesus did in my life and in my heart at a move just like this. I was going into my freshman year of high school. I was shy. I was terrified of everything, okay? And my parents were like, you're going to church camp. And I was like, I don't want to. And they were like, we don't care, okay? So they put me on the bus and off I went. Had no idea where I was going and I was coming to a place just like this. And I cannot describe to you the way that Jesus absolutely, totally, and completely captivated my heart that week for him and for his church. And so Jason was talking earlier about ministry and about how there is like a shortage of pastors, church leaders, and I just want to say I would not be here if it weren't for what Jesus did in my heart at MOVE. And so I, I just, I just got to start by saying, you're just not here by accident. Like, you might just think, I'm just going to the next thing, I'm going to the next meal, I'm going to the next session, I'm going to the alternative, I'm going to whatever, but I, I just don't want you to miss that, like, what's happening here in you this week, God might keep using for years, for me, like, 15 years down the road, God's going to keep using it. So I just want to say, before we get started, you are not here on accident, and God is and will continue to write a beautiful, beautiful story in your life. And so I'm just so grateful to get to spend just a little bit of time with all of you together tonight. We are talking about a very important word. What's the P word for today? What is it? Posture. posture. How's your posture? How's your posture? I mean, when I say the word posture, you're thinking of your back posture as all of you now sit up in your seat, right? In fact, I have an image for you. Let's just check your posture against this image, okay? How many of you, you have posture number one? You have like a forward head and a, I, I don't even know if I can do that. I don't, I'm not sure. How many of you, that's your posture? Okay, we're not actually very good at seeing ourselves. So how many of you, your friend has posture number one? You're like, oh, I'm putting that person on blast right now, yeah. How many of you have posture number three? You're like this. Like, bro, how does your back not hurt all day long? How many of you, your friend has posture number three? You're like, dude, stand up straight, right? But how many of you have posture number two? You're like, yeah, I, my posture's so good. Okay. You have permission to call out the posture of the people around you kindly. Okay, because we all want to be the middle posture, balanced and upright and ready for whatever might come our way. So now that you're sitting up straight, and now that I have your attention, I just got to tell you, I'm actually not here at all to talk to you about your back posture. Well, that's like important. Chiropractors really want you to think about that. That's actually not why I'm here. Because here at MOVE this week, we're talking about this idea of rest. Like, what does it even mean to rest? How are we going to experience a meaningful rest? Like, I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning to catch a flight to come here. I could use, like, a nap right now. But that's not the kind of rest that we're talking about. Like, we're talking about a rest that's bigger than just a nap. We're talking about a rest that's bigger than a night's sleep. We are talking about a different kind of of rest. Here's the reality. Your life, my life, can be really overwhelming, can't it? I mean, just think about all the things you as a high school student have to manage any given week, any given day of your life. I mean, you're managing some of the simple things like school, right? Not right now. I know it's summer break, woo -woo, right? But in like not that long from now, you'll be managing school. And all the things that come with school, like keeping up your grades and your homework and your social calendar and all those things, you're managing family. For some of you, that's awesome. You love your family and 
being with your family is great. And for others of you, like managing the emotional load that is, is your family is like really hard. You're all managing friendships of some kind. You're keeping tabs. You're making sure you've got people. You're making sure you're not alone. No one wants to feel lonely. You know, we're managing like our identity. We're making sure the image we're putting across is exactly what we hope people like want from us. We're managing our social media accounts. Some of you out here trying to be influencers, right? Any of you, tic- are there any TikTok influencers in here? Self-proclaimed? All right. You're managing your image. You're managing your extracurricular activities. You're managing your sports teams and your music and all the things. You're managing your video game accounts, question mark? Yeah. You're managing your faith. Like, you're all at different places in the spiritual journey, walking in the direction of Jesus. Some of you haven't even thought about turning in the direction of Jesus, but you're here at a place like this, like you are managing so many things. I mean, raise your hand if you have to manage at least one of the things I just mentioned in your everyday life. All of us. I mean, we're holding a lot. There's always something that needs to get done or someone to talk to. And on the surface, a lot of these things aren't inherently bad. But how often do we forget that all of these things in and of themselves are actually not the point? Like scurrying from thing to thing to thing, being so pressed for time, managing, trying to hold everything together is actually just never really what Jesus had in mind. We're going to learn tonight from two characters in the Bible, two women, actually. I'm so excited to dive into this passage with you, but to teach this passage, I actually need some help. So I need a couple people, three exactly, that would like to be actors. Now let me explain what you're getting into. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Hang on. So I need, I need, you got to like give yourself to this. Like you can't just come up here and be lame, okay? So I need like a Mary and a Martha. So I need two girls. I need two girls. You right there. Come on, come on. Black shirt, you. Oh boy, I have more than I I meant to. Sorry, okay, one of you, I'm terribly sorry, has to go sit down. That is my bad. Pointing from a distance is very hard. I'm so sorry. Now I need one guy. World's tallest elf. Okay. All right, you guys come over here. All right, what's your name? Malia. Everybody say hi, Malia. What's your name? Layla. Everybody say hi, Layla. What's your name? Caleb. World's tallest elf. Everybody say, what's up, Caleb? All right, now, are you guys ready for this? You got you to, like, give yourself to this. You ready? All right, so now, Malia, your name is no longer Malia, okay? Everybody say hi to Mary. This is Mary. Everybody say, hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Mary, you can go sit right, stand right over there. Your name is now Martha. Everybody say, what's up, Martha? (laughs) Martha, you can go stand over there. Your name, now this is where it gets really awkward. Okay, because uh, your name is now Jesus. But this is not to be, he is not actually Jesus, okay? But just to to recognize your role as Jesus, we're just going to give you this red sash that blends in beautifully with your elf sweatshirt. Okay, go sit down. So I'm going to read this out loud, and Jesus and Mary and Martha are going to help us into this story. Okay, you ready? If you have your Bibles, I'm in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 38. It will be on the screen if you want to follow along. And Mary and Martha, you got to get, like, you got to go in. So like, if I say you're doing something, you you got to like do the thing. Okay, you good? You tracking with me? Jesus, be good. 
Luke 10, beginning in verse 38, here's what's happening. Jesus and some of his very closest friends, his disciples, they're traveling. Okay, they're on their way to a place called Jerusalem. And so they're stopping over someplace because they're on the way. They're on the road. Okay, that's where the story picks up. And it says this, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, so you're continuing on your way, yeah, good job. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Martha, I'm going to need more than that. (laughs) Perfect. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet. She sat at the Lord's feet. You can just come sit down, Mary. Perfect. Perfect listening to what he taught. She's listening, yes. What are you teaching? I don't want to know. Okay. (laughs) But Martha was distracted by the big dinner that she was preparing. She's preparing a dinner. Yes, perfect. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset. Oh, you got the stanky finger. Okay. (laughs) You are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Now, I just want to point something out. We've got two very different characters, right? We have two women with two very different, what's our P word for today? Postures. Postures. Two women with two very different postures. We've got Mary, who's right here at Jesus' feet, and then we have Martha, who's kind of like, "Ah!" right? She's like running around and freaking out and making dinner, and then she comes to Jesus, and she's like, bro, it's not fair. Like, look at Mary. She's the worst, right? Two women with two very different postures. Let's give it up for these guys. Thank you. You guys can grab a seat. Now I want to talk about these two women for just a moment. Because Martha, Martha's just distracted. She's overoccupied. She's so busy worrying about things instead of the one person she's with. I mean, isn't Martha so relatable though? Like, she's the one in the story absolutely freaking out. And to be honest with you, I'm like, oh my goodness, I am so Martha. But like, what does Jesus say to Martha? He's like, Martha, you are so concerned over all these details. And there's really only one thing worthy of your concern. And now we could spend a lot of time like criticizing Martha. We could be like, Martha's the worst. She's so distracted. But Martha... Don't miss this. Martha's doing the very best thing she knew how to do to honor Jesus. Martha thought that her busyness, like doing all the things, making dinner, running around the house, she thought that this was her best display of love and devotion to Jesus. See, Martha hadn't realized yet that Jesus actually didn't want her to do anything for him. In this moment, Jesus just wanted Martha. He just wanted her attention. He just wanted her focus. He didn't want her tasks. He didn't want her accomplishments. Jesus just wanted Martha. She's running around the house, serving Jesus with her hospitality, and we can't really point the finger at Martha for too long before we realize kind of do the same thing. I mean, we worry over every little detail. We stress out so much about what's happening around us instead of like who was with us. I mean, and sometimes for good reason, like Martha had a good reason to be freaking out. Like if Jesus came to your house for dinner, would you be freaking out? You're not going to hand Jesus a bean burrito from Taco Bell, right? She's like, I want this meal to be legit. She didn't want to let Jesus down. She wanted everything to be perfect for him. She just hadn't realized yet. That's not actually what Jesus wanted from her. 
He didn't need her perfection. He didn't need her to try to control everything. He just wanted Martha. I wonder what the thing is in your life that you're running around trying to control every detail. I wonder how you might relate to Martha. I wonder what's distracting you, what's pulling you away from the main thing, because the main thing was sitting right here, and Martha was too busy over here. Maybe you're trying to make sure that you're perfect. Maybe you're trying to deliver exactly what you think everyone expects around you. And honestly, you are exhausted. (laughs) You're trying to do all the right things for God. You're running around trying to please every friend and every person in your life. And all along the way, you're losing yourself because you're so worried about what everyone else around you will think. You've forgotten who you even are. Because while Martha's busy trying to serve Jesus, and even though she thinks she's doing everything right, what does she end up saying? She's like, Jesus, it's so unfair. It's so unfair I have to do all these things, Jesus. Don't you get it? Like, Mary should have to come help me. Jesus, it's so unfair that I have to manage all these things. Martha is distracted, and Jesus looks at her and says, Martha, Mary got it right. Sometimes we're distracted. I asked you earlier, and I'll ask you again, how's your posture? How do you see yourself in our new friend, Martha? A couple weeks ago, I had a a dentist appointment. How many of you here love going to the dentist? Okay, I just have to say, like, in all due respect, that's weird, okay? How many of you hate going to the dentist? Yeah, those are my people, okay? The dentist is like my worst nightmare, okay? And like, I don't really have anything wrong with my teeth, but I can't stand it. So this is how it goes every time I have a dentist appointment. It's on the calendar for months, right? And then about three weeks before the appointment, I start freaking out about the appointment, okay? And then I start thinking about every reason why I could possibly cancel said dentist appointment, right? Like, I'm, like, making stories up, right? But I don't want to, like, want to call my dentist and lie, right? I want to be a liar to my dentist, right? So here I just did this whole thing a few weeks ago, and I'm freaking out. And I'm like, I can't do this appointment. I, there's too much going on. It's so stressful for me. So I finally work up the courage a couple hours before my dentist appointment to call my dentist and bail, right? Which they love that, by the way. They love that. So I'm freaking out. Literally, I've lost sleep over this dentist appointment. Like, it gives me so much anxiety. So I finally call, and I've been, like, telling my friends, like, dude, I have this dentist appointment. It's freaking me out. And they're like, just cancel it. Like, it's just really not that serious. You are giving way too much energy for this. So I finally work up the courage. I pick up the phone. I call, and I'm like, hi, my name's Aaron Johnston. I have an appointment at 930, and I'm going to need to reschedule that. And I'm, like, sweating because I just, like, I'm like, they're going to think I'm the worst. They're going to be like, what's wrong with you? You have terrible dental hygiene. You never come to your appointments, right? And this lady on the other end, she's like, Aaron who? And I'm like, Aaron Johnston? She's like, yeah, you're not on the schedule. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not on the schedule? She's like, yeah, you're not on the schedule. I'm like, so you're telling me. I've been freaking out about a fake dentist appointment for no less than three weeks. Yeah, you're not on the schedule. Simultaneously leaps of joy in my heart, right? And then, like, sadness for how much time I've wasted freaking out about this dentist appointment. Now, a dentist appointment's not that big of a deal. I mean, for me, it kind of is. But it kind of begins to paint a picture of what we see in Martha. Like, we just get a little distracted. I just wonder, how's your posture? Now, we got to move to the other person, because Mary, Mary is so epic, okay? Okay? She's super quiet. We don't see much from her in the story, but she's she's just got it just right. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Rather than running around trying to do all the things that Martha's doing, Mary's just sitting right here at the feet of Jesus. In fact, I'm going to give you a word. If you didn't know this, the Bible is not written in English, okay? We don't have time to get into all of what that means. 
It's written in a few different languages, but in the, in the original language, there's this word because it, when Jesus is responding to Martha, he says, Mary has chosen to sit at my feet. She's chosen this. And that word is this, eklegomai, in the original language, like when the Bible was written. And this word means to choose. But not just anything, to choose one out of many. So Jesus is saying, yeah, Mary has chosen to sit at my feet. She's chosen, she's made one decision out of many different options. Don't miss this. There were lots of choices Mary could make in that moment. Jesus was not the only choice she could make. She could have been running around. She could have been distracted. She could have chosen so many other things. It's also important to note that Disciples, like people who were following after a teacher, people who were learning from a specific teacher, they would sit at the feet of their teachers. Where was Mary? Sitting at the feet of her teacher. And everybody would have expected Mary as a woman to be up helping prepare a meal. Like they would have expected her to be hospitable towards Jesus. They would have seen that as her role or her job, and yet don't miss this, Mary chooses. She chooses to sit at the feet of Jesus. She chooses the most important option out of the many options she had. She chose Jesus. And what's the result of that choice? Jesus says, he says, these things, when he's talking to Martha, he's like, hey, Martha, yeah, Mary, she chose one option out of the many that she had, and these things can never be taken away from her. Never. Let that sink in. The things Mary had received from Jesus, all the good things that Jesus was teaching her and showing her and pouring into her, those things could never be taken away from her. Other things in Mary's life could be taken from her. Her possessions, those could be gone in an instant. Her abilities could be gone in an instant. Her health could be gone in an instant. But what Mary had received from Jesus could never be taken from her. Because from Jesus, we receive all sorts of good things. Anybody in here received good from Jesus at any point in your life? And if you don't yet follow Jesus, I just want to say you can belong way before you believe. We are so glad you're here. But there's good things we receive from Jesus like grace and kindness, acceptance, like a family, peace, and even the thing we're we're talking about this week, rest. So Jesus celebrates this choice of Mary. He's like, Mary got it right. Mary's learning that the only way to receive the rest her soul actually needed was to sit at the feet of the one who could give it to her. So we'll give grace to Martha because, man, we've all been there and we relate to her. And we'll learn from Mary who models so well to us what is actually most important, which is receiving from Jesus, learning from Jesus, sitting with Jesus to choose Jesus. The example of Mary invites us to just ask another question. What will we choose? How much time do you spend these days in a posture like that of Mary, waiting to receive from Jesus? In fact, talking about Mary and Martha, I actually want to just have a moment of reflection. Because I've asked you along the way how you find yourself into these two incredible women from the scripture, but I want to get a little bit more direct. And there's three postures you might resonate with, and I want to offer them to you now. The first is this. Maybe your posture is that you are apart from Jesus. Maybe you don't know him, you don't have a relationship with him, you're not even sure if you want to. Like if Jesus is sitting here, you're kind of over here. You're kind of peeking in on what life with Jesus might be like. Maybe your back is to him. Maybe you're facing him, but you are apart from Jesus. You're certainly not around Jesus. You're certainly not with Jesus. You are apart from him. 
I just want you to know that no matter where you find yourself, what your posture is, that Jesus loves you so deeply. And even if you're apart from him right now, he still loves you, even in this moment, more than you could ever know. And all you have to do is say a simple yes to him, to his life, his way, his direction. And you don't have to have it all figured out like Martha thought she did, because Jesus, even if you're apart from him, he just wants to be with you. Something tells me that there are people in this room tonight who are apart from Jesus. And he's with you even if you're far away from him. The second posture that maybe some of us might relate to is that we're around Jesus. We're not actually like with him like Mary. We're more like Martha, like we're around Jesus. We're a little bit distracted. You know what? It actually, it makes me think of this image right here. Uh, yeah. Dug the dog from up, right? What does this dog say? Squirrel, right? We're kind of like Doug. Yeah, we're like Martha, but for just a minute, let me pull over over here. We're kind of like Doug, okay? Like we're like, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to live life for you. And then like that thing over here comes up and we're like, squirrel, right? We're kind of just around Jesus. We're like in his vicinity. Like Jesus was in Martha's home, but she wasn't actually spending any time with him. We're kind of, if I can put it this way, like we're kind of stalking Jesus. We spend a lot of time around him, but not actually with him. And can I just say, like, no one wants a stalker, right? Martha, she's so close to him, but yet she's distracted. Her posture She's not apart from Jesus because she loves him deeply and wants to follow him, but she's not with, she's, she's around him. Do you relate to that? Sometimes hard things in our lives leave us in this place of being around Jesus. Like we want to trust him so de desperately. We want to be with him, and yet we're just distracted. Maybe there's things in your life that have left you at a place of being so distracted. Maybe your parents have split. Maybe you navigate like tough family dynamics of any shape and any size and you want to follow Jesus, but you're just distracted. Or maybe there's illness in your family or you've had to move. There's issues at school. There can be so many things that cause us to be distracted. Here's what I want you to hear me say. There is no shame in that. Jesus is not like wagging his finger at you, waiting for you to figure it out. In fact, when Martha came to Jesus and she's like, it's not fair. And Jesus was like, Martha, it's okay. Are you just around Jesus? Some of us are just around him because we want to do our own thing. Like, we want to go to church on Sundays, and we like the community at, at our church and our youth group and who we hang with, but, like, our lives don't actually reflect that we follow Jesus in any way, shape, and form. Like, our TikTok history and our church attendance, like, they don't line up. We're around Jesus, but we're not actually with him. Because you know how we'll know if we're actually with Jesus? Our lives will be different. We will be transformed. Not because of anything we've done, but because of his power and his strength and his love at work in us. Are you just around him? Maybe you're the church kid that's like done all the things. You try to get all the things done and you try to serve so well, which is so good. But then you realize, I've been doing all these things for Jesus, just like Martha, and I haven't actually been with him. About five years ago, I moved to Vegas from Boise, Idaho. And I had been working as a pastor for about five or six years before that. And I had gotten to a place in my life where I was doing a lot of great things for Jesus, but I really wasn't spending that much time with Jesus. And I just got to tell you guys, I was exhausted. 
Like all the things I mentioned earlier that we have to hold and manage, like that's where I was. And I was just, I was like Martha, like, God, it's not fair. My posture was around Jesus. Even though I was paid to work at a church. Guys, this can happen to any of us. And the invitation for all of us, especially at a place like this, is to recalibrate, to realign our lives, to focus again and to be like Mary. Because the third posture is to be with Jesus. To be following him, to be choosing his way, to be sitting at his feet. The people that sit at his feet, they know him. They don't just know about him. Sure, sometimes that might look like spending, like doing things for Jesus, like serving and, and like doing actions, but that's not all it is. How well do you know him? It would be a shame if you came to a week like this and all you were was around Jesus and never actually with him. Reminder, he loves us and he's with us no matter what posture we find ourselves in, but he so desperately wants us to learn from and to be like Mary. Because what Jesus has to offer us is the only thing, let me say that as loud as I can, the only thing that will give us the true rest that our souls long for. He promises it over and over and over again in the scripture. And I don't have time to get into it all. But if you want rest, if you don't wanna have to hold the weight of all those things we've been talking about, then you're gonna have to receive from Jesus. And in order to receive from him, you're gonna have to be with him. We have so much to learn from Mary. To be with him can mean we just talk to him. Like we would talk to a friend or we read his word or we spend time, wait for it, in silence. Like giving him space to speak instead of us always doing all the talking or maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's spending time with others who point us in the direction of Jesus. There's all sorts of things we can do to be with Jesus, but I just got to ask you tonight, how's your posture? Are you around him? Are you apart from him? Or are you really with him? He has so much good that he wants to give to each of us if we would only be willing to receive it. One of my very best friends just gave birth to a little guy named Malachi. And Malachi loves his mama. He's only a couple months old. He just like waits to receive from his mom. And like when he's laying on the ground and his mom comes in the room, like Malachi's eyes just like light up like, oh. Even at a couple months, he's like, that's my mom. I just, I just, he just wants to be with his mom. Like he can be so ticked off. Someone else is holding him and then she grabs him and holds him and he's just like, all is right in the world. All he wants is to just be with his mama. The same is true of us with Jesus. Our invitation is to just want to be with him. So I thought we'd start together right now. Because Jesus wants our attention. He doesn't want us to be distracted. He wants us to receive from him because he actually has something in store for each of us. And no matter where you find yourself, which posture you relate to, I just just wanna have a moment. Or actually just wanna invite you to just open up your hands right now. This is just a posture of receiving. We can rest truly because Jesus has everything we need. He can hold it all. He's got big shoulders. He holds it all like 
like right here in the palm of his hand. He can hold it all, but we're going to open our palms as a posture of receiving. And in just a minute, we're going to invite you to pray and do some other things, but before we get to any of that, I just, I just want you to receive from Jesus. In fact, I just want you to open your hands and, and under your breath, I just want you to close your eyes and just say, Jesus, what, what do you want to say to me right now? Maybe confess to him what your posture is. Are you apart from him or just around him or are you with him? Or maybe tell him what you want your posture to be towards him. And then just say, Jesus, what do you want to say to me right now? Go ahead and do that for a little bit.